everyone, my name's Maria and this is the Huix Home. So today I'm going to take you through how I've spring cleaned my house from top to bottom. This was originally a series that I filmed for Instagram. It was a 20 part series. So I just want to apologise in advance that the video quality isn't that great purely because I filmed it on my phone and I've had to edit the videos and change the layout to youtube format so it's not the quality is not as good as the instagram videos that i shared but you will get the gist of everything that i've done i've started it at the beginning of march so i had to fit this cleaning around my schedule of working four days a week so i did it on an evening after work and on my days off it took me a full month in total to do the full spring clean from top to bottom. I took my time with it because I wanted to do it properly. So I'm going to take you through the whole process and talk you through everything I've done and everything I've used. Um, I'll be showing you it in room by room order. What I won't be doing is showing you every room in the house because that will just take all day. So I'm just going to share with you the main rooms, which is the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the living room, the kitchen, and you'll get the gist of what I've done from there. So check it out. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I am fairly new to YouTube, so I need all the help I can get. Give me a big thumbs up and I hope you enjoy it. So let's kick things off with the ensuite. The first thing I do is open a window, let the fresh air in and empty the room of all of its contents. It's so much easier to clean a bathroom on a blank canvas. I've poured Mr Muscle drain and block gel down the shower plug hole. I've sprayed all the taps with Viacal Descaler. Gone around the ceiling with a high duster, cleaned the window, the extractor vent, the mirror, inside the drawers. By this time, the Viacal had had enough time to do its job, so we gave all the taps a good scrub, the plug hole. I took the toilet seat off, put that in the shower and cleaned that with bleach. I literally made sure everything got a really good clean, leaving no stones unturned. This is what a spring clean is all about, cleaning the things you don't get a chance to do every day. The toilet had the scrub of its life, then we moved on to the radiators, then I even cleaned the walls. I cleaned the doors, tiles, the tile grout. I gave that a good scrub using the pink stuff miracle paste and the final job was the floor put everything back always light a candle and that's the first room done my bedroom you're going to have to move baby aren't you if spencer will let me the first thing i'm going to do is get my bed stripped and get that put in the washing machine i've taken my curtains down and they're going to go in the washing machine too if you do this always check the label first i've freshened up the mattress using some bicarb of soda just sprinkle it over the mattress leave it for a good 10 minutes and then hoover it off later i also like to turn my mattress around once every six months i've gone around the ceiling and the curving with a high duster and then i moved on to the windows and blinds first i get the excess dust off the blinds using a flash dust magnet and then i wipe every individual slat using a zoflora antibacterial wipe for the windows, in an empty spray bottle, I put some washing up liquid, half water, half white vinegar, spray that on the windows, it comes up really nice and soapy, give them a good wash and then I remove that with the window vac. I've dusted all the sills, the shelves, I've cleaned all the light fittings and lamps, bedside tables, using a damp duster that I purchased from Sheen. And then it was time to give the bed a good clean, hoovered all the headboard and the sides and then I got to hoover off all the bicarb that I'd sprinkled on it earlier. Before I started my spring clean, I went round every room in the house and made a list of every single thing that i wanted to do in each room and ticked it off bit by bit i don't start in the next room until the previous room is finished that's my rule of thumb my bed is an ottoman bed so i got that lifted up removed everything and gave it a good clean under there it's amazing how dusty it gets i then gave it a spritz and a freshen up with 1001 carpet freshener spray deep cleaning is really thirsty wear so make sure you've got plenty of tea and biscuits to keep your energy levels up and the momentum going Tea and biscuits will see you through. Don't forget to declutter as you go. This is a really good opportunity to go through everything that you've got and get rid of anything that you don't need. Organise your things into four piles. Keep, sell, throw and donate. It's a big task, but I promise you, you will feel so much better for it. Once again, we are leaving no stones unturned here. I am making sure everything gets a wipe down. 
all the woodwork, the skating boards, the architraves, the doors, the radiators, the wardrobe, the drawers, you name it, I've done it. I've even got a little electric fire in my bedroom, which I absolutely love. It's so cosy. That's had a good clean too. So we move on to the finishing touches now. Give the carpet a good hoover and again, a spray with the 1001 carpet fresh. I've put the curtains back up using half a toilet roll between the pleats to make them hang neater. I don't iron bed in, I smooth it over with Lenore crease release spray and that's my bedroom done. We're moving on to the kids' bedrooms now, starting off with my son's room. We've stripped the bed and the curtains and we've put those in the wash. When it comes to bedding, I always add some Astonish Laundry Cleansing Protector. It just kills off any nasty germs or bed bugs and gives it a good hygienic clean. I've gone around the room with a high duster making sure there's no cobwebs hanging from the ceilings. I've cleaned the light fittings, the windows and the blinds using the same method as in the previous room. I always open the window when I'm doing a deep clean to let the fresh air in and the bad smells out, especially when cleaning a teenager's room. I'm literally pulling everything out, dusting all surfaces and getting in every single nook and cranny. I went through my son's clothes with him. He got rid of anything that he no longer wears or doesn't fit him anymore. And then we put it all back in a much more organised fashion. Whether or not it'll stay like that remains to be seen. We finished off by cleaning all the woodwork, the radiators, giving the floor a good hoover and putting everything back. I then moved on to my daughter's room. The messiest room in the house. Literally two weeks before this clean, this bedroom was fully redecorated, so everything is brand new in here. The curtains are brand new, all the walls are freshly painted, the light fittings are brand new. So this room didn't actually need a spring clean. It just needed a tidy up just to keep on top of everything. So I just went round, dusted everything, stripped and washed the bed in and just gave it a general clean and tidy. And that concludes all the bedrooms. The family bathroom is next. Just like the ensuite, I've started by emptying the whole room of all of its contents. I've sprayed all the taps in the shower with Kill Rock Lime Scale Removal Spray, which I'll leave for a few minutes now to do its job. I've gone around with a high duster. I've cleaned the blinds and the window using the same method as in the previous rooms. Working my way from one side of the room to the other, from top to bottom, just literally wiping down everything. I do clean my bathroom regularly, so today I'm just really trying to concentrate on the things that I don't do all the time, which is inside the plug holes, between the toilet seat, the extractor fan, all those bits that we just don't get around to on a daily basis. One of my most used products in this room is the Pink Stuff Miracle Paste with a Sonic Scrubber. This really does get into all those nook and crannies and it's perfect for cleaning the tile grout. It comes up like new. That's right, you did just see me mopping the walls a second ago. Can't believe how dirty they was. The floor's now mopped, everything's put back and that's the bathroom done. The landing, the stairs and the hallway. This officially marks the halfway point. We are working our way downstairs now. First of all, I made the decision to get rid of the sideboard on the top of the stairs. Decluttering is all part of the spring cleaning process and it was just taking up too much room and it wasn't really needed. So that's gone now. The most important things to clean on the landing was the mirror, the pictures, the highs, the lows, the skirting boards, the bedroom doors, the architraves and those little metal strips that stick between your carpets on the floor. I'm sorry, I don't know the names of them, but they're just things that I never really wipe. So I give them a good clean. I went down the stairs with a carpet scraper before I hoovered it. These carpet scrapers go really deep into the carpet fibres and pick up the hairs that the hoovers just don't get. I have a really small hallway, so this didn't take long, but now we are officially downstairs. Right then, let's get this living room done. First of all, I'm taking the curtains down and putting them in the washing machine. Before you do this, always read the label. Once again, we're cleaning the blinds and the windows. Honestly, cleaning blinds is such a chore. By this point, I'd seriously felt like I'd hit a wall with this spring clean, but we were so near the end point, we just had to keep going. As with previous rooms, I pulled everything out so I could get behind and underneath everything to give it all a good dust 
hoover and clean. It's amazing what you find when you pull things out. Things you've been looking for for months are always under the sofa or underneath that coffee table. Having two dogs always means that I fight a losing battle against dog hairs. So when I pull the sofa out, Honestly, it is dog hair central behind there. It's disgusting, but I wouldn't change them for the world. I was surprised to find a cup underneath my coffee table. Now, I've got no idea how long it had been there, but by the state of the inside of it, it looked like it had been there for a very long time. So I always hang my curtains back up straight after they've been in the wash whilst they're still wet. I find that they dry so much easier whilst they're hanging, the creases drop out and the room ends up smelling like fresh laundry. So my living room clean was done during the day and then I saved my sofa clean until later. The reason for this is because obviously we all sit on the sofa regularly and I wanted to shampoo it. So I did it on an evening before we went to bed so that it could be left to dry overnight. First of all, I gave it all a really good hoover, pulled all the cushions off. As you can see, dog hairs all over. They was really hard to get up so I had to use the carpet scraper for this. Then I used a handheld carpet cleaner which is from Swan Brand. It was really easy to use. Just wait until you see how much dirt it picked up. Gross. But very satisfying. Cushions and throws have also been washed and that's the living room done. It's the final room guys, the kitchen. It's a biggie, in fact so big I think I tackled this over the course of four days. If you've stuck with me this far, thank you. The light is shining brightly at the end of that tunnel. So we have started by doing the highs, then we did the tops of the kitchen cupboards. Couldn't quite believe it but we found remnants from Christmas still up there. I then moved on to the windows and the window sills. I cleaned the extractor fan for the cooker, the oven clean, the fridge freezer clean and the washing machine clean have all been filmed separately and they were all shared in my shorts if you want to check them out on there. Little fun story for you here, the last time I pulled these vents out, as I opened them up, a spider's nest fell out of them. It gave me the fright of my life and now I'm always terrified to open them up in case something falls out. I've given the radiators a good clean and now I'm moving on to the dishwasher. I'm going to give the dishwasher a service by topping up the salt, the rinse aid, cleaning the filter and then I'll give all the inside a wipe down and put in some dishwasher cleaner and run it on a hot empty wash. So this next job I can honestly say was the worst. It was absolutely relentless. It took me a whole day to do this. I emptied every single kitchen cupboard, sorted through every item that was in there, went through all the food, checking all the expiry dates. I went through everything, wiped the cupboards out and then tried to put everything back in a more organised fashion. It's amazing how much stuff we actually accumulate over time and it's also amazing how much of it we actually don't even need or use. I had to be brutal during this. It was hard work, but it was so worth it. I told myself, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it properly. And that means leaving no stones unturned. So, yep, yeah, that means going through every cupboard, every knife and fork, and every single piece of Tupperware. Speaking of Tupperware, where do all the lids come from? I've got so many more lids than I actually have boxes. It's ridiculous. Out of all the cupboards, I saved the best until last. The one cupboard that I actually enjoy cleaning is the one with the cleaning products in, obviously. Once all the cupboards were done, I gave all the cupboard fronts a good clean down with some Zoflora spray and a microfiber cloth. Next job was to give the kitchen bins a good clean out, again using Zoflora spray. I have two bins in my kitchen, one for general work waste and one for recycling. Our kitchen has an extension which we use as a dining area. In there we've got a big window and some patio doors. I gave them a clean. As you can see by this point I started losing my marbles a little bit. I really had hit a wall but I had to keep it together, keep moving because we was nearly done. We have a small sofa in here which I pulled out. This sofa is where my British Bulldog spends his days. So the dog hairs were pretty bad in this area. I gave everything a really good hoover, made sure the skirting boards were all clean and then give the floor a really good mop with some concentrated disinfectant. Pet friendly, of course. I've been cleaning the floors and the skirting boards as I've been working my way around the room. Moving on to the finishing touches now. I've pulled the dining table out, cleaned all underneath there and made sure all the chairs are clean. I've cleaned around all the doors and the architraves. 
I've cleaned the bar stools, all using the same Zerflora spray. I then went on to descale the kettle and clean all the kitchen appliances. I cleaned the tiles and the splash back, wiped down the worktops, descaled all the sink and taps and then gave the sink a really good scrub. It's taken me a month, one whole month of evenings, weekends and the occasional day off to deep clean my full house from top to bottom. I've fitted this in around my home life, my kids, my job, my social life. It hasn't been easy, don't get me wrong, but I did it. If you're thinking about deep cleaning your home, but you're struggling to find the time or the motivation, my advice would be to start by making a list. Making a list of everything that needs doing in every room and then tackle it bit by bit. Whether it's one room a week, an hour a week, an hour a day, just fit it in around your schedule. It does not matter how long it takes as long as you get there in the end. And once you get started, you will get there. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. That was my spring clean. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up and I will see you soon.